All right, so looking now at something else, we're going to be graphing actual square root functions. Um, the first thing you want to write is these words in this example I'm about to give you. So you have it. Um, you are going to be asked to graph a square root function on your test. Your test is next Friday, if I haven't told you already. Um, I don't want to carry this information over beyond the spring break because otherwise you'll forget a lot of the stuff that you learned. So yes, we are taking a test next Friday and that way we can wrap up chapter 10 and move to our last chapter for the year after spring break. Uh, the parent function is actually just the original graph of a function. Um, there are a bunch of parent functions out there. There's the parabola that we learned about. There's the absolute value v. And then we also have the um, parent function of a radical or square root function. And the way you graph this thing is the parent function itself has three points you need. The first one's at the origin. The second one from the origin go right one up one. And the third one go right four, one, two, three, four, up two. Those three points are going to be the main three points you're going to use over and over and over and over for all of your graphs. And it looks like a sideways parabola. That's just half of it. So again, it kind of curves up through those points and goes this way. Just to show you the graph, I'll put one up here, square root of x, and close it because I just want x, and you'll notice again that it ha kind of has a curve that starts here and goes out that way. So again, when you go to graph it on your test, you're going to have this, these three points, moved all over the place. Alright, so all that's going to happen is you're either going to use these three points, or you're going to move it down, or up, or left, or right, and that's really what this lesson's about, is how does this thing move whenever numbers are included. All right. So real fast, let's look at some graphs on the graphing calculator to determine what happens to the parent function whenever I add some numbers around the radical. So there are two locations where numbers are going to be added. That's inside and outside of the radical. So if you would please follow what's going on here. You already saw your y equals square root of x. I'm going to add to that graph y equals square root of x, second x squared of x, close, plus 4 and pay attention to how this graph moves. It will have the same exact shape, it's just going to move. You notice, again, it has the same shape, but this moved up four. So I need to make that note here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go back, and instead of making plus four, I'm gonna make this minus two, like the second graph has, and let's see what happens. Again, part of what you need to be doing is kind of trying to see, or if you can guess what's gonna to happen to this. This moved it up 4, which means it should probably move it the opposite direction, which would be down 2. Let's see. So here's your first graph, and there's your second graph. Again, notice that it moved down. So this actually moved down 2. Looking at the third one, square root of x plus 1. Making your guess, I believe that since the plus moved up, the negative moved down, this should be up 1 if we're right. Let's see. There's your original and then there's your second notice again that it went up one and then your last one you probably already know especially if you're thinking about this stuff that this is obviously going to move down six let's just see for ourselves to make sure and yes it did it moved down and again it's got the same exact shape that's why I said a parent function just moves based off of the numbers so down six so what you want to write for yourself is that outside values move it up and down Notice all these values were outside the radical, and they moved it either up or down. Again, if it's plus, it moves up, minus moves down. And you want to make sure you have this, because you're going to need this for that large assignment I have waiting for you as soon as you finish this video, because it's a quick video today. But again, outside moves up and down, plus being up, minus being down. Let's look at inside values real quick, just to make sure we got what's going on. So again, we do have our square root of x, which is your parent function, the one that starts at the origin and goes from there. This time we're going to do abs or square root of x plus 2, so square root of x plus 2 under is what we're looking at here. Let's see what happens. Here's your original. That moved left. So it was here, it moved over there. So this moved left 2. Alright, so if that's being what it's supposed to be, if that moved it left, then this should obviously move it right. Let's just see if that works that way. Minus 4. Should move it right 4, but let's just see. Again, your original graph comes from the origin. Yep, and there's your second one. Move to the right. 
your third again if the negative four moved right four the negative five should just move right five let's see there's your original and there's your one move to the right so again that is to the right and then the plus six should of course be the opposite direction so it should move left six let's just see though there's your original graph yep and there is the graph moved to the left like it's supposed to be so what you're gonna write here is what the inside values do and the inside values move left and right the trick here though is as you notice usually plus two makes you think of right two but what you have to remember on the inside values is that you switch the sign so right is actually minus whereas left is plus one way to think about it is this if you were to solve x minus 5 equals 0, notice that you would add 5 to both sides to get x equals 5. That's a positive 5. If you were to solve x plus 6 equals 0, you would actually subtract 6, which gives you a negative 6, which is where you can kind of imagine what's going on. But either way, whenever it's inside the radical, switch the information to make sure you get what's going on. Other than that, your lesson credit today is actually on the Math Excel. Um, it is to be worked alone. Uh, you're not supposed to be working with anybody on this. If you have any questions on it, bring it to me. Um, the reason I do that is because I need to know that you know this, not that you and a partner or that someone giving you the answers can uh, get you through it. I need you yourself to try to figure this stuff out. It is a lot of questions, but the questions are quick. Um, once you understand what's going on, you can answer it very easily. Um, I actually worked them out for myself and I think those 20 questions or so took me five minutes or 30 questions took me five minutes but yes I know that I understand what's going on but even if you don't know what's going on it doesn't mean it's going to take you 30 minutes the only reason it takes you 30 minutes is if you don't ask for any help and you stare at the questions and miss them over and over and over but like I said if you actually go through and try to figure out what's going on I think you should be okay other than that good luck and like I said use me not anybody else please don't get caught talking or messing around you might end up with a zero and lose your computer for the day and lose your practice. So please don't do that. Make a good choice and let's get going.